The number eight most viewed PragerU video is this one, How Socialism Ruined My Country. Today we're going on a special PragerU field trip. That's right, we're going to Brazil. <laughs> I don't want to go to Brazil. <laughs> Let's just dive in then, shall we? Many American millennials seem yeah. to be drawn to socialism. Yeah. They bring out this guy. Ooh, look at that jawline. This guy's 100% going to be a fascist. I'm sorry, before I get too sidetracked here, I want to point out the title is How Socialism Ruined My Country. So I would like to operate under the premise that this video of, from PragerU is going to tell us exactly how socialism has ruined Brazil. Yes, Brazil. Famously socialist Brazil. When I think of socialist countries, the first thing I think of is Brazil. Many American millennials seem to be drawn to socialism. Hey, that's me. They came out in big numbers for Bernie Sanders in the 2016 Oh God. In presidential primary. In 2022, but oh, we're off to a rough start. He's calling Bernie Sanders socialist. Oh, oh no. Actually, a more accurate description of Bernie Sanders would be social Democrat. But no, this guy, this, this is the kind of guy who's going to call all of it socialism. They rail against capitalism on their college campuses. They wear Che Guevara t-shirts to signal their socialist virtue. Okay, hold up. They rail against capitalism at their college campuses and while wearing Che Guevara t-shirts. Man, we are... <laughs> We're burying the lead a lot here. <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever seen anyone wearing a Che Guevara t-shirt. That might just be my anecdote, but I don't think I've ever seen that. No, the real socialist people I know, you have to like convince them to put on clothes in the first place. I know a lot about socialism. Oh, I live do? in Rio de Janeiro and I work throughout Brazil as a journalist for a popular magazine. I know a lot about socialism. I was born in Rio de Janeiro. I don't get it. How does that work? How does that mean anything? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know a whole lot about Brazil. Uh, the country, not, not, not this guy. That's his last name. Wow, his last name is Brazil, and he's from Brazil. That's kind of silly. I know we joke that, like, PragerU deliberately picks, like, the token people for their videos for each topic, but... Really? Brazil from Brazil? <laughs> Hold up. Actually, now I'm suspicious. Hold on. What does he work for? Veja. There we are. That's the magazine. Oh, here we are. Ha. Huh. What did he call it? And I work throughout Brazil as a journalist for a popular magazine. Kind of weird he didn't say the name of the magazine, don't you think? Anyway, this is the magazine. Veja is a Brazilian weekly news magazine published in Sao Paulo. Here's the part we care about. It has been described as politically aligned with right-wing movements. During its early days, Veja was known for publishing hoaxes as facts. In 1975, it declared the Loch Ness Monster was real before ultimately recognizing the news as fake. Oh no. This was a while ago. In 1983, it republished an April Fool's Day prank from the British magazine New Science. According to Veja, scientists were able to fuse the molecules of a cow and a tomato in order to produce tomato flavored meat. Oh my God. But a lot of this was like in the eighties, so a while ago. On 2005, as part of its growing right-wing agenda, Veja defended the rejection of the prohibition of firearms in that year's referendum. Veja tried to mislead readers, presenting the referendum as a proposition of the ruling workers party and its owners had a conflict of interest in campaigning against banning firearms. Veja's publishing company, Editoria Abril, was a business partner of the Berman family, owner of the Brazilian cartridge company. Wow. So the publishing company, that he works for is partnered with an arms manufacturer. I didn't expect we'd get off to a great start like this. Oh man. <laughs> I know there's a lot of stereotypes about Brazil, like being violent and crime ridden. How far are we into the stream? We're only like 15 minutes. And, and we're already into arms manufacturing. A fun little thing to tuck away in the back of your mind. Maybe that's poisoning the well, but I think, I think context like that is good to know. Oh, wow. The third paragraph down here, Lula sued Veja. Wow. I didn't know that. They're not sending us their best. <laughs> In the early 2000s, Brazil's economy was growing rapidly. Okay. The government had enacted economic and monetary reforms and invested holdings in some state-run companies 
giving the private sector more room to breathe. Wow, look at that, a PragerU graph that actually makes sense. He's talking about the economy growing, so I guess it's like GDP. You should probably label what, what kind of growth we're looking at here on the y-axis. They enacted economic and monetary reforms divested from state-run companies, giving the private sector room to breathe. <sighs> Whatever. Inflation, a chronic problem in Brazil, was dramatically reduced. Hold on. Hold on, I looked this up earlier. This is actually true. Yeah, during the 80s and the 90s here, boom. This top number here is 2,947%. That was the inflation rate in uh, 1990. This happened before the subject of this video, but man. Oh wait, no, I'm glad I looked this up. You look at the inflation rate since then, it's down um, starting in 97 and on. It's like 6%. 4%, 8%, 14 right there. But it's like, it's it's relatively flat, com especially compared to that. Ah, but if we zoom in, look at this. Beep, 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 beep. What was his claim again? When did this start? In the early 2000s, Brazil's economy was growing rapidly. <laughs> Inflation, a chronic problem in Brazil, was dramatically reduced. Looking at the big picture, the inflation was reduced much, a bit earlier than the 2000s. It started in the 90s. 2000 to 2010, what's that look like? Uh, no, in the early 2000s, it kind of spiked up and then it jumped down the next year. So, uh, no, you didn't do anything with the inflation. God, is this whole video gonna be like this? Oh no. Forgan investors, poured into the country, eager to catch a portion of our expanding economy. <clears throat> the future seemed promised. Foreign investors. Venezuela kicked them out! <laughs> they all went to Brazil! Right, you get it? Because in the one video with Brazil, there was bags of money flying out of it, and now it's to like... To catch a portion of our... Arrows are flying in. They like to recycle these things, don't they? Brazil's becoming a player on the international stage. Good for them. That's called globalization, baby. Me and Felipe, we go back. We used to be roommates in college. He never cleaned his dishes. He would go out and get drunk on the weekends. And then he would come back and cry because girls found him weird. All right, what else you got for me, Felipe, baby? The future seemed promising, but today, our economy oh, no. is in shambles, oh, unemployment no. and debt are massive, and powerful politicians are being investigated for involvement in the largest scandals oh, no. of fraud and corruption in the country's history. Isn't this happening like everywhere? What happened? What, what, tell me. In 2002, tell me. Tell me. a socialist politician named uh, Lula da Silva ran for the presidency. Oh, he thinks Lula is a socialist. Now, I'm not super familiar with Lula. Was Lula a socialist? He worked with the Workers' Party of Brazil. I know that. The Workers' Party is a political party in Brazil. Some scholars classify its ideology as social democracy. Great! I told you, Lula's a socialist just like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> oh, God. How can I argue with people who are like, they don't even understand basic political theory. Oh boy. You don't argue with them. You beat them. They're just gonna call anything that's like to the left and they don't like. They're just gonna call it socialist. Give it to me, baby. He was a socialist, but painted himself as a modern cool kind of socialist. I'm uncomfortable. I genuinely forgot they did the, he's, he's wearing the shirt and glasses fit. <laughs> Me and Lula here, we're gonna hit up Rio. We're gonna go to a pool party. We're gonna pick up some chicks and we're gonna pick up your ill-gotten gains from the, from the capitalist overlords. The fact that they like actually put a Hawaiian shirt on him is hilarious. But painted himself as a modern cool kind of socialist. This is what they think a cool person looks like. Dennis Prager watches my videos. All right, I gotta stop with this bit. This is ridiculous. What else is gonna happen? He would be the politician who would heal national divisions and unite everyone. A lot of politicians say that, but like, I never believe it. But the old message about the need for income redistribution to decrease inequality was still there. Oh, so he's saying like, Lula was a socialist, but he's, he said he was a cool socialist. He still wanted to decrease inequality. That evil <laughs> socialist. Felipe, 
Uh, You're already approaching this uh, with the conclusion in mind that that this is bad. Why is this bad? I'd like to point out that the premise here was how socialism ruined my country. How's this tie into that? It doesn't. It doesn't. Spoiler, it doesn't. The media, academic elite, and celebrities assured Brazilian that by transferring the money from the rich to the poor, yeah. the poor could finally be richer. So this is what makes me call him a fascist. Saying that the media, the academic elite, and the celebrities are all working together to push socialism. Yeah, that's... That's Nazi shit. I'm sorry. That that really is. But the only ones who really got rich were Lula and his corporate and political friends. Ah, but they were corrupt, he says. It's not socialism. Wait, I thought he was a socialist. He has, he has corporate friends. It only got worse under his successor, Dilma Rousseff. Wait, you're not going to explain the... Corruption. The socialists. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Wait. This is this is disjointed. The only ones who got rich were these Britain people. And political friends. Okay. It only got worse under his successor, Dilma Rousseff. It only got worse. The socialists. It only got worse under his successor. She gets a whole image and a name drop, and then he drops it. He drops the subject of his of Lula's successor, and just moves on. No explanation. That's kind of sus. Oh, because the media, the academic elite, they, those people are all socialists too. Wait, even though you work for Veja in your part of the media... The socialists increased government spending, deficits, and debt. They called it a stimulus. Okay, fine. Whatever. They increased the minimum wage and the benefits of social programs. They call it social justice. <laughs> Did they really? I'm not going to fact check that. <laughs> that seems kind of silly. This guy's painting the, the sign here. He's got like a, a stepladder in the middle of the road. This is not, this is not good. Latin American OSHA, I guess. They increased the salaries and retirement benefits of the civil service. Okay. They called it investing in the future. You are burying the lead here, my guy. They handed out thousands of jobs in the government and state-owned companies as favors to their political allies. Is this true? called it good governance did they do it just for their political allies or did they have like a public works program maybe we can fact check this well this one seems very very different the new president devours the files across her desk and has an extraordinary memory for statistics asked by a news reporter whether she knew how many jobs the government created Rousseff created 1.5 million new jobs in six months how president lula changed brazil bbc news uh-oh brazil's business community has come to appreciate its one-time boogeyman in the breakfast room of my Sao Paulo hotel, gaggles of BlackBerry-wielding entrepreneurs begin their business deals for the day, riding the wave of an economy that will grow by about 7.5% and create some 2.5 million jobs in 2010. We've done well by Lula, so no one is complaining, one suited diner told me. Felipe, are you telling me Lula has 2.5 million friends that he gave these jobs to. I'm getting like too caught up on this. We need to keep going. Lula's just a really friendly guy. Shit, man. If he's got 2.5 million friends, yet yeah, maybe he deserves it, you know? <laughs> it worked for a while. Socialism always works at the beginning. Someone's been listening to Debbie D'Souza. But government spending just kept going up and then Lula's socialist paradise fell apart and the economy fell with it. The outcome, oh, from it? 2008 to 2015, government spending grew nearly four hold times. On, hold on, hold on. No numbers, no nothing. There's a PragerU graph for you. The economy shrank 3.8% in 2015, the worst result in 25 years. Wow, shrank a whole 3.8%, huh? And this is the fault of uh, Lula, huh? You know, when he says the economy, I would like a metric. Now we're going to do the dance where we look for a source. Oh, look, the page doesn't exist. Maybe I can Google it. Facts and sources. Here we are. Watch Brazilian journalist Felipe discusses the impact of socialism in Latin America. He's citing a video of himself talking with Dennis Prager. Wow, for 35 minutes. That's amazing. Economy. I want to see the metric they use. Here we are. 2015, it shrank nearly 4%. Cool. Source, Bloomberg. That's a good source. Let's take a look. The link here, Goldman's Brick Era ends as funds fold after years of losses. 
not exactly sure this article says what they think it says. Oh my god. That's how they cite their sources, huh? Gotta be behind paywalls. This one is a link to their own website on PragerU. It's supposed to be a PragerU video, but it doesn't exist. That's nice. In 2015, the socialist policy of the successive administration resulted in the economy shrinking nearly 4%. An economist rating the once booming economy is one of the world's worst. Wait a minute. Didn't you already link this earlier? Yeah, you did. You gave the same link twice in your list. Who the fuck wrote this? They used the same source twice. Economy of Brazil. This might be it. So they hit a recession, and apparently that's socialism. Oh, here we are. Change in GDP. Finally, I went through all that effort just to finally find a graph. Prager is not gonna offer it. Here we are. This is this is GDP growth by year. Yep, he said economy shrank uh, 3.8 in 2015. Yep. Yep, there we are. The worst result in 25 years. The worst result in 25 years does sound like cherry picking, doesn't it? Can you find me an economy that has not ever had a recession? I'll wait. That same year, a World Bank survey found Brazil's economy World to Bank. be one of the world's worst. Okay, World Bank, fine. Worst. Out of 189 countries, <sighs> we were the 16th hardest place to open a business. Shit sucks, man. That's what it's like when you have a recession. The 60th most difficult nation in which to register property. 60? We're number 60 in registering property? I mean, it's not so bad. Could be better, but I mean... And the 12th most complex place to pay taxes. Well, that's not good. Then again, most complex place to pay taxes. But the least complex is the Cayman Islands. Okay, yeah, that's all I needed to see, really. Let's go. Economically and morally, the almost 15 years of socialist policies have greatly harmed. I'm sorry, 15 years? When was Lula elected? In 2002, a socialist. He was elected in 2002? Oh, baby. Oh, that's a long time. Economically and morally. It just occurred to me that he said morally. That's, uh, that's kind of weird. The almost 15 years of socialist policies have greatly harmed Brazil. We also remain among the world's leaders in murder and robbery, <laughs> and we rank near the bottom of industrialized nations in terms of education and healthcare. Somehow I think this guy would call improvements to those things socialist as well. Americans take it for granted that they can be born into the lower- <laughs> This is Americans! Look at us! ...class and reach the middle or even upper class. Many Brazilians take it for granted that they can't. He's literally lying to my face about my own country. And how does that work? Brazilians take it for granted that they can't. How can you take- I take it for granted that I've got cancer. <sighs> Maybe he's just not familiar with like English idioms and I'm making fun of him. That would be kind of bad. I'm sorry. Felipe baby, I'm sorry. But finally some things are starting to change. There may be reason for hope. A real socialist is coming? <laughs> Today, more and more Brazilians see that capitalism and limited government are the only way forward. Fucking ha. Ah. Thankfully for Brazil, Lula has been charged in several oh, lawsuits no. for corruption, involvement in a oh, criminal organization, no. influence peddling, money laundering, and obstruction of justice. Okay, this I do know. Thankfully for Brazilians, he's been charged with this. No. All of these charges were like bullshit, like right from the start because he was running... He was going to run for president again, and they dropped all these charges on him so he couldn't run. On 9 June 2019, The Intercept published leaked telegram messages between the judge in Lula's case, Sergio Moro, and the Operation Car Wash lead prosecutor, Delton Dalagnol, in which they allegedly conspired to convict Lula to prevent his candidacy for the 2018 presidential election. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, seven sources for that one. Moro was accused of lacking impartiality in Lula's trial. Following these disclosures, the resumption of legal proceedings was determined by the Supreme Court. Moro has denied any wrongdoing or judicial misconduct during the course of Operation Car Wash and his investigation of the former president, claiming the conversations leaked by The Intercept were misinterpreted by the press and that conversations between prosecutors and judges are normal. Moro became Minister of Justice and Public Security after the election of President Jair Bolsonaro, and it is disputed whether an agreement was in place prior to Bolsonaro's election. 100%. I'll call it. 
100% it was. Even Felipe here is talking about like corruption being a thing in Brazil for a while. It's like, here it is, right there. The information published by The Intercept prompted reactions both in Brazil and overseas. A group of 17 lawyers, ministers of justice, and high court members from eight countries have reacted to the leaks by describing former President Lula as a political prisoner and calling for his release. United States Senator Bernie Sanders said Lula should be released and his conviction annulled. If according to Felipe, that's another socialist, so what did he know? <laughs> Representative Ro Khanna asked the Trump administration to investigate Lula's case, saying that... Moro was a bad actor and part of a larger conspiracy to send Lula to jail. American political commentator Michael Brooks. Hey, that's how I first learned of Lula from Michael Brooks. A vocal candidate for the former president asserted that Lula's imprisonment and Moro's alleged political motives had rendered the results of the 2018 election fundamentally illegitimate. Exclusive. Brazil's top prosecutors who indicted Lula schemed in secret messages to prevent his party from winning the 2018 election. Yeah. So there we are. Also think about it from a different way. Even if Lula did do all this, right? Isn't it kind of suspicious that Bolsonaro, the next guy coming in, is going to appoint the judge who convicted uh, his most likely political opponent who would have beaten him? Isn't it kind of suspicious that he would have appointed Moro to a, a higher position after that? That's kind of strange, don't you think? There's a lot of stuff here. I'll leave a link in the description. Check it out if you're interested. That's a funny thing I've I've learned learned about a lot of like since Trump has come and everything everything with him. I realize it's like you know, it's not a matter of whether something is illegal or unethical. It's a matter of who is going to stop them. With Trump, it's like no one's going to stop him. So he can do whatever he wants. Rousseff was impeached in 2016 for falsifying the government's finances and illegally using money from state-owned banks to run the government. Didn't put her in prison, I note. Just impeached her. Rousseff was also accused of fiscal peddling in her administration, an accounting maneuver to give the false impression that more money was received than was spent. Ooh. That's fraud, baby. Government allegedly failed to fund public and private banks that manage public payments, including social assistance programs, forcing the banks to finance the programs themselves without compensation. The Recep administration's budgeting allegedly used this peddling to improve its fiscal outcomes and make the surplus for the years 2012 to 2014 appear larger. Whoa, 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 wait a second. I just realized something. He's decrying all this stuff, all this stuff is happening in Brazil. And as he's going through this, he's blaming it. He's blaming most of it on Lula. He just brings up a Dilma Rousseff at two moments here. Her impeachment and early on when he says um, Lula's uh, successor was worse. But that's it. He doesn't actually explain anything else. But by the time he's talking about the economy crashing, Rousseff was in office, not Lula. What uh, Felipe described in the video as the government of, of Brazil was spending more money than they were bringing in, in in tax dollars. So that happened under Dilma Rousseff. That didn't happen under Lula. That's part of why she got impeached. That's kind of weird that he didn't mention that. And that's why my videos are 40 minutes long in Prager User 5. <laughs> Wow, Felipe, that's kind of slimy. This crisis prompted the new government to freeze federal spending, reduce the government's role in state-owned companies, and to encourage some of the massive federal workforce to resign. That one's weird. There it is, though. Libertarians. Can't help but feel like he didn't really explain much of these things up until this point. No one knows whether these basic measures will be enough to rescue Brazil economically. Truthfully. The damage has been so extensive, it may take decades for the country to recover. Wait, what damage? The only damage he mentioned was the economy shrank by 3.8%. He didn't even use the proper measure of the GDP shrank because we hit a recession. He just said the economy shrank because socialism failed. Freeze federal spending. What does freeze federal spending look like? This kind of logic is used for austerity. We have to worry about the deficit. So now we're going to cut all the Medicare and your grandma's going to die because 
We're not gonna give her her dialysis anymore. Mommy, why does grandma have to die? She has to die for the deficit. The damage has been so extensive, it may take decades for the country to recover. But if we do, it won't be socialism that saves us. Oh. American millennials, take note. Okay, boomer. I am Felipe Moura Brasil for Prager University. Wow, that was horrible. Once again, we don't really get a definition of socialism. But that, that, that's typical. We got to mention something kind of obvious here. Title of the video, as you can see, How Socialism Ruined My Country. Not only did he not explain how socialism ruined his country, he didn't even explain how his country was ruined. I was, I was hoping for more. I was hoping for him to be like, oh yeah, ever since Lula came in, Brazil's been a crime... Crime infested hellhole, murder's high, with the murder rate's this high, corruption's everywhere. And it's like, it's not necessarily any worse than it was beforehand. I think someone got stabbed here. Yeah, this was awesome. Hi everyone, I am Felipe Moura Brasil, a journalist and columnist in Brazil. Uh -huh. Your videos have made a deep impact on me and many Brazilians. Maybe that's why... <laughs> Maybe that's why your country's having some problems. <laughs> One more thing I wanted to bring up. I would be remiss in my duties if I did not bring this up. 1964 Brazilian coup d'etat. Ah, here we are. The 1964 Brazilian coup d'etat was a series of events in Brazil from March 31st to April 1st that led to the overthrow of President... Uh, wow. Goulart, I'm sorry, by members of the Brazilian Armed Forces, supported by the United States government. The basic reforms plan proposed by Goulart had the potential to socialize the profits of large companies. It was labeled as a socialist threat by right-wing sectors of the society and by the military. Wow! History repeats itself. Look at that. The coup brought to Brazil a military regime politically aligned to the interests of the United States government. The regime lasted until 1985. Neves was indirectly elected the first civilian president of Brazil since the 1960 elections. Yeah, I'm mispronouncing some of this because I'm not familiar with Portuguese. Operation Brother Sam was the code name given to Kennedy's plan to prevent Brazil from becoming another China or Cuba. Yeah. Kennedy was not happy about that. Hello everyone! I'm gonna thank the patron backers one final time for the year of 2020. Thanks to all of the November patron backers. Dios, Elsie Hup, George, Jari Pulamo, and Mello Cheddar. I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek. As you can see, my Dave Rubin file folder is currently at... is a lot. I may have started a project that is significantly larger than I first anticipated it would be. Also, everything sucks, but that's okay. It'll be done when it's done. In the meantime, we'll keep having fun with videos like this. Thanks for watching, and thanks for sticking with me. It's been a fun two years. We're gonna have at least two more. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Slide to the left. That guy's really cool. Yes, I am. Thank you.